started with a coffee table. Is probably not how you would expect a wargaming video to start, but this new coffee table came with a mountain of polystyrene and cardboard, which thinking about it, I probably should have taken a picture of, shouldn't I? Now, after my little Relic Blade paint-a-thon a few months back, I've been wanting to get a Relic Blade table put together for a little while. So, staring at that mountain of polystyrene kind of got me thinking, how far could I get towards a proper table without spending a penny? Now, obviously, I'm a war gamer, so I have a number of hobby supplies just lying around the house unused. Especially things like flocks, glues, and cheaper paints. Things that you buy for the purpose of basing or, indeed, scenery. But if you happen to be watching this, chances are you're a wargamer too. So if I can pull this off for free, there's a pretty good chance you can also pull it off for free. And fingers crossed, in the process, you can use up some of that unloved hobby stuff that's been cluttering up your workspace. So let's see what we can do. First thing I did was put together a little frame. This is just sheet polystyrene, which I've secured together with masking tape. I've given myself about an inch of lip around the top surface, just to stop dice from rolling off of it, as well as a few inches of raised platform underneath so that it stands up off the table I put it on. So, first thing you're probably thinking looking at that is that's not structural, that's gonna fall apart. And do you know what? You'd be right if you weren't wrong. See, back when I were a lad, this is actually how we build tables. Even the tables at my local GW were built in a similar way. And what we'd do is strengthen up that polystyrene using paper mache made from PVA glue and bog roll. That's uh, water closet towelettes for you non-native speakers. Because you see, with a liberal application of this stuff, both underneath to create a supporting structure and also all over the top of the piece too, what we get is a really rigid, strong, and also nicely textured surface. And that texture will probably come in handy. Okay, so that's the basic structure. And so far we're on target, we've not spent a penny. So what else can we do to actually make this into a proper table? Well, a few layers of that polystyrene cut with a knife, or in my case, a polystyrene cutter, because I'm a nerd glue up nicely to make some really cool hills. And in fact, you can use this method to do as much of the landscape on the board as you want, hills and valleys. But landscaping isn't all that that polystyrene sheeting is good for, and we've still got plenty of it left. So, what's next? Well, with some cutting and gluing, we can knock up some retro ruins. And the really cool thing about owning a polystyrene cutter is that they tend to come with an engraving tip, so you can use them to make brick texture really easily. Again though, before anyone curses me out in the comments, I just wanna stress, nothing I've done with the polystyrene cutter can't be done with a knife for free. It's just a lot quicker to have the tool, and I happened to have the tool lying around, and I've still not used it since I bought it, so yeah, sue me. Right, anyway, back to detailing now. Uh, little bits of snapped off coffee stirrer can be added to the buildings to make awesome wooden details like broken down flooring. I definitely bought mine legitimately, but you can also definitely steal them from your local coffee shop. Not that I'm condoning that, but they'll probably give you a few if you ask. Oh, and all that bobbly polystyrene debris? That happens to make really good scale rubble. So just lay some glue down and sprinkle it over the top. Oh, oh, and these little rocks, they are just tissue paper dipped in thin down PVA, scrunched up into little balls and placed where I want them. Easiest rocks ever. This is actually a really good tip just in general for basing scenery or whatever. And once all those static elements are in place, everything just gets a little squirt of watered down PVA to seal it all off. In preparation for painting, I'm also adding some sand to the surface of the table. Whilst the mache texture is great, it's also rather coarse, so just the addition of some sand will create a bit more detail to it. I also just want to take a little moment to talk about this basin paste. How many times have you bought a hobby supply with the intention of using it in a project, only to find that when you actually see it in person, 
you're not quite as keen on it as you were in the pictures. Well, this AK sand texture was just such a purchase for me, but rather than waste it, it's actually really good for texturing some more bits of our table. And that's actually, believe it or not, all of the main elements of the table done. When it comes to things like scatter terrain, I kind of want to go for a mix of stuff that's static in place already on the table and freestanding stuff that I can move around wherever I want it. So at the same time that I was doing buildings, I also took care of a few things like that, just some big boulders and rocks and that kind of stuff. There's also foliage and things like that, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. We need to first deal with painting, I think. And it was at this point in the journey that I received a rather harsh reminder of why you really need to make sure you seal polystyrene thoroughly before you hit it with spray paint. Because I nearly ruined this whole project by melting parts of it. Clever me. So, with the fear of God put back into me, I decided I'd hand paint most of the table first to make sure there was a good seal on all that polystyrene. Luckily, I think I dodged a bullet this time though, and everything looks like it will still pass. After that, I'm onto some dry brushing, brown for the gaming surface, grey for the rocks and buildings, just to give everything a cool look underneath all of the other bits that we'll put on top. A little detailing on the buildings lifts them further, as well as an extra dry brush here and there to make sure they stand out. And as you can see, this is actually looking like a pretty finished board already, or at least it's getting there. It's definitely getting there. But for the setting of Relic Blade, I want this to be a lush, grassy board. So you remember those flocks that I mentioned earlier in the video? Well, unlike static grass, flocks like this don't really need a special applicator and can still look really, really good. If you don't already have some in your hobby drawer, do yourself a favor and grab some, especially if you're a Blood Bowl player because they make brilliant AstroTurf. I've also had a bunch of these scale model railway trees in my drawer forever and yeah, they're a bit small. They're not really to scale for miniature wargaming, but they'll probably still look like small trees or shrubs, so I think they're probably okay to use. In the context of this board, inserting a few here or there will definitely give us something that passes, and again, it uses up something from my hobby drawer that would otherwise be wasted. A few of the larger tufts that I normally use for basin can also come in handy here. Again, this is just to flesh things out a little more. Applying them in clumps or around the trees gives the impression of little clusters of foliage or longer grass. So when all said and done, my little project to try and build a table without spending anything is actually coming together into something pretty cool. But before we look at it in all its finished glory, I think first of all we should talk about true cost. In the interest of transparency, I'm including this graphic showing the cost of the key things that you would need to own in order to build this exact table that I've made. But since all of this genuinely was just wasted crap I had lying around and I kind of would have used whatever, instead of looking at this as a reflection of the true cost of the project and saying that title's clickbait, this isn't free at all, what I'm instead hoping you'll take away from this is how cool the stuff you can build is if you think of projects to just use that stuff you've got lying around. Things that you might think of as trash that you've had in the drawer forever could actually be the secret to a really, really cool project. However, for those more useful items, I've also thrown a few Amazon affiliate links below. That's a really great way that you can support the channel without spending any extra money on top of what you would have spent anyway. So if you're thinking of taking on a project like this and you do need to buy a few bits for it, check those out. And speaking of supporting the channel, of course, this is the part in the video where I have to mention that there are also links below to my Patreon and Ko-fi. This video took over two weeks to make and your support through Patreon and Ko-fi is what makes that possible. So for as little as a pound a month, you can join the Patreon, join the Ko-fi. You will get some cool members only benefits like early access to videos, but best of all, you'll also get access to my Discord, which is a really cool place to hang out where I'm available to answer questions and even give tips and feedback on your painting, if that's a thing that you want from me. Anyway, look, enough natter, I've gone on long enough. Let's take a proper look at this finished board. Here we go.
I mean, come on, look at that. For just some crap that was lying around the house, a few unused hobby supplies and bits of household items. How good is that? It's not the best board you're ever going to see, and yeah, I accept that maybe the buildings should be a bit more refined with thinner walls and a bit more detail to them, but for something that was essentially made for nothing, I think that's a really cool little gaming board, and I can't wait to play some games of Relic Blade on it, which is, after all, what I built it for. That said, I probably should finish painting my Relic Blade starter set. Maybe. I should also mention, by the way, if you're in the UK and you like Relic Blade, you can get it from Exit 23 Games, who are both friends of mine and a partner of the channel, so that's a win-win for everyone. Again, Exit 23 are linked below if you want to check them out. Now then, don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more like it, and until next time, folks, I'm going to go and sweep up loads of polystyrene mess. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye for now.